Hello everybody, Hardware Thrift here, and welcome back to our lesson seven of our LabVIEW introductory course. This lesson is going to be about for loops and it's just gonna be a basic introductory on what those are. So as I mentioned last time when we were doing while loops, for loops work kind of in the same way. In a traditional programming language, a for loop, you will give it an integer value and that loop will iterate whatever the program is inside of it as many times as that integer value that you specified. So it's just a more focused control than just a constantly running while loop. And when you initiate it, it's a lot of the same in LabVIEW. So if we go over to our block diagram, you're going to right click, you're gonna go into structures, and you're gonna pull out the for loop. So you'll notice there's a few things different about the for loop in comparison to the while loop. We'll pull one out just so you can look at them both. In a while loop, if you remember, you have our little stop button down here and that will take a Boolean signal to say whether or not you should stop the while loop once a condition is met. In the for loop, we have this little integer tab up here and this integer tab takes in a number from the outside. So let's say five, six, seven, and that's how many this for loop will basically loop until it's done executing. And the same idea is with the while loop, we have a counter in here and this counter starts at zero. So for each of them, the counter will start at zero. So that means, let's say we want to make this N up here. We'll get rid of our, we'll get rid of our while loop down here. Let's say this N we have, we want it to be a number of our choosing. So we'll take our numeric control, we'll hook it up to our n, and we'll set that to whatever number we please. And then we hook up our numeric inside the actual for loop, and we're gonna connect that to the integer. So now that we have that in there, what we can do is run the program. Actually, we're gonna set this to six. We're gonna run the program. And if you noticed, as I mentioned, even though we set the loop to loop six times, you'll notice we only have five on the output of that numeric. That's because the counter counts starts from zero. So that means any kind of, any number output or the number of iterations if you're using that, uh, that counter will be n minus one. So the n number you input minus one at the output. One way you can fix that pretty simply is taking, deleting that line and inputting a plus one, ooh, where were we looking? You can input one of these plus one increments. And so what that'll do is take every output and add one to it when you run it. So if we run it again, you'll now see that we have six and six for our for loop. Um, that's just about the basics for a for loop. So the next thing we're going to go do is our challenge problem. And that's where we can see a little more of the different mechanics playing in with our for loop. So our challenge problem, we're going to pull that up. So the challenge problem is using a for loop count up in odd numbers for a hundred intervals. So it's as simple as it sounds. You want a numeric indicator to count up, but only in odd numbers for a hundred intervals. So, if you would like to work on that by yourselves, if you have LabVIEW open, please pause now, and then when you come back, you'll be able to see me walking through the answer. So if you did not pause, um, I'll be going through the answer now. So first things first, we're gonna throw down a for loop. And on that for loop, we're gonna connect a constant that we wanna keep at 100. So now we have this for loop, it's gonna run 100 intervals. And with that, we want it to count every single odd number. So since we don't want to start at zero, we're going to use that little trick I used before and use the plus one right there. We're going to pull our increment counter to it. And then from there, we want to multiply by two. So now what this is doing is taking every number that you're outputting and multiplying by two. So it's going to be one times two, two times two, three times two. And what that's gonna give us, we're gonna put our constant in there, make that equal to two. 
and that'll give us all the even numbers counting up. So if we want to just get to the odd numbers, we're going to take that number. We're going to de-increment it by 1, so we're going to subtract 1 from our multiples. So what that'll be giving us now is if we have 1 times 2, minus 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, we're going to put our numeric indicator in and hook that up to our output. So I can run that right now and you'll see it gets to 199, but we actually want to see it count. So we're going to hook up we're going to hook up some timing. We're going to put our weight and whenever you use these weights and you just want it to control what's ever in the for loop, you put it inside the for loop and then it will slow down only what's in the for loop. So that means it will slow down the execution. Let's say we have multiple for loops or while loops in there. You can actually put them all on their own timing increments uh, by putting a watch inside them. Or you can run every single one on the same time by putting a watch on the outside. So we're going to create a constant on there and we're going to set it to, let's say, 100. So if I run this now, you'll see that it's going to tick up in odd numbers until it gets to that fun final 199. I hope you found this, uh, or sorry, I think, yep, that's all we have for today. So I hope you found this useful. Our next lesson is going to be on case structures, so an equivalent to if-else statements in normal programming. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them down in the comments section. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe to keep up to date with the videos that are coming out. Thank you. I'll see you next time.